it's over. You mess up, it's over. Each week on this video, we'll give you NFL survivor pool strategy. I'm Alan Sislowski here with Rotowire co-founder Chris Liss. If we've gotten by in week one, some of us picked Tampa Bay. How are you thinking about it this week? Well, I picked Tampa Bay in two of my three leagues, and I, let me tell you something. It was torture. It was a rough, uh, rough way to go, and Chris Godwin fumbled at the two-yard line to go up nine with five minutes left. I almost defenestrated. Uh, uh, luckily, Tom Brady let him down, and they didn't botch the field goal, but that was, that was dicey. And then I was very relaxed on Sunday watching everybody else struggle. Um, I think you learn not to take Jacksonville on the road uh, or do anything uh, ridiculous like that. You know, take the take the best teams uh, and don't mess around, I think, early on, especially. This week, there's really three double-digit favorites that you would consider. And uh, I was looking sort of at the office football pools numbers so far. And 36.6% are on the Browns, 21.1% are on the Bucks, and 174 are on the Packers. I think Bucks and Packers are both about equal here. I'd probably take the Bucks, uh, but I've used the Bucks, so I'm personally probably going to be on the Packers and just get a teeny bit of uh, windfall if the Browns happen to lose. I don't think they will, uh, but if they do, um, you know, you get a little, a few more people getting knocked out of them. So I'm going to update those numbers and put up the Survivor article tonight. But I'm leaning right now Bucks if I had them, and if I don't have them, probably the Packers. We don't recommend saving teams in Survivor Pool strategy, but. If you insist on playing that way, is there a dark horse team maybe a little bit further down the ranks that you would consider? Not really. Uh, I just, I really just don't think you should do that. Uh, you know, the Seahawks or maybe the Broncos, you know, you, you try to get cute with that stuff and you're out. You know, it's not like you say, oh, great. You know, like I, I made an error, but I'll, I'll make it up later. It's over. You mess up, it's over. And the thing is, the information we have now is the best information we have. In week eight, there'll be a team that you, you, you know, you might be like, oh, I'm going to use up the Broncos. Uh, instead of one of these elite teams because, you know, I want to use up the Broncos. And let's say even if you're right and they win. And it turns out the Broncos are really good and the team you saved, the Browns, ends up being mediocre. Well, now you just used up the good team anyway. So I just think, and there's going to be injuries, you know, each week. And we don't know. But we know what's true now. And I, I think you should really use the information you have now and basically uh, take the best team um, that's likely to win but adjusted for the pot odds, adjusted for the reward of taking them, which is how many people are on all of these teams. And we look, there's not some huge 50, 60% owned team, but the Browns are pretty big because people probably want to use them up. And I will uh, root against them this week and I will take the Packers or the Bucks. Does survivor strategy change as the weeks move on? As you get to the end of your pool, you got to actually count. Say there's 10 people left. You got to look at the three teams that are available, like who has who left. And sometimes I'll go down and I'll be like, wow, eight of these 10 have used this team. I may be the only one on them and I'll use them. But if I can't tell if all 10 have got all three available, then you just, I might default to the aggregators. But again, as the season goes on, those get noisier and noisier. To see Chris Liss's survivor column that he writes each week, click the link in the video description below.